I don't know what made me so interested in sex. I think part of it, well, I'm gonna say one is probably daddy issues. Hi everyone, welcome back to Touchy Subject. I'm your host, Lana The Plug. Today we have a very special show planned, but before we get into it, I would just like to ask if you're on YouTube listening right now, please subscribe and like this video. And if you're listening on a podcast app, please uh, leave a review and subscribe. It really helps our engagement. Okay, so today we have a girl that I feel like everyone here already knows just because you are a massive person at this point. I feel like everywhere I turn, that's where you are. (laughs) Um, we have Mia Malkova here. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. You look so beautiful in your lovely princess dress. Thank you. You're the first person that got really excited about the set to me and was like, wait, can I dress up? Can we like have like a tea party? And I was like, yeah, (laughs) hell yeah. She's, she's on board with me. This is what I wanted. Uh, we have kind of mixed reviews i feel like in the comments some girls are like you look amazing love all your dresses and i think it's a lot of the dudes are like you look stupid what the (laughs) are you wearing um i think it's like the most adorable thing i've ever seen thank you thank you thank you um you've probably done a lot of podcasts but none like this where you get to be really girly so i've never done a super girly podcast I listened to you do a podcast where were you smoking weed? It was like a weed podcast. Um, I wasn't smoking weed. I I haven't smoked in a couple of years because I do get anxiety. I do, too. I I think it was like five years ago was probably the last time I smoked weed. And I feel like if I tried to do it now, I would just have to go in my room and be alone and hope that the night ends. That's exactly what I would do as well. I would try to go to sleep. I wouldn't be able to talk to anybody Mm -hmm. because I get really crazy anxiety. And then I also I can't like. I can't organize my thoughts. Yeah, it's I feel like I like ruminate over the same thing and then I'll try to in- intervene with like a new thought to try to like change the rumination and then it it doesn't work. I can't do it in a social setting either because someone will sit there and they'll try to have like a nice conversation with me and they'll be looking at me in the eyes and I'm just like thinking of something completely different yeah. and then I come back and I'm like, I'm you really didn't. high. What did you just say? <laughs> it's the <laughs> worst. I I remember I would just be like, wait, am I breathing loud? Can they can they yeah. tell? Like, am I am I breathing too loud? Should I breathe yeah. lower? Like just think you, the you stupidest don't want things. To know you're acting high. Yeah. Do you do you do any recreational drugs um, at this point? Nothing crazy. You strike me as like a mushroom acid person. I've done acid a couple like quite a few times. Um, but the thing is, is when I. When I do drugs, it's very few and far between. Mm-hmm. Like there are there are times that I'm like, "Fuck it, let's have fun." Like I think the last thing that I did was, I do, I did like a tiny little bump of Molly, mm-hmm. and then the same night a tiny little bump of ketamine, and that was like, I think that was in January, and that was like the last drug thing. Did you have a lot of fun, or was it just like I had whatever? Fun. It was like a very very chill setting like I had um relaxing music on there was a fire going I had like my um one of my siblings there with me that I was hanging out with and so like it was in his boyfriend and it was just like very cozy and so not asleep. like a party it was a party but nothing crazy just relaxed okay I feel yeah. like now if I it's been so long since I've really partied and took any recreational drugs I feel like if I did I would want it to be like in a very chill setting like that yeah just I- I get overstimulated on mm-hmm. drugs, so I could never like do something like that at a festival or if yeah. I'm like in a big crowd of people that I don't really know or feel comfortable with. Um, drinking alcohol, I get really drunk. You do? Do you drink? <laughs> uh, yeah, but also not often. So okay. when I do drink, I get drunk. You're and lightweight. I get drunk easily. Yeah. I I like wish that drinking wasn't so harsh the next day because I do really have a lot of fun when I drink even just one shot I drink one shot and I'm like okay who can I go flirt with which ladies can I go find and I have a lot of fun just dancing or whatever but then the next day I'm like my whole day feels gone even if it's just one drink yeah this the next day I I can't do anything other than just like sit on the couch and drink water (laughs) yeah it definitely makes you think about it again like I'm going out tonight and I'm probably not going to drink anything and I want to but also you should should. I should I'm going to the beach tomorrow and I feel like being hungover at the beach with your toddler is not so if you drink like you always feel bloated the next day yeah I feel just gross and then I I don't end up sleeping well and when I don't sleep well I just want to eat a bunch of garbage food Mm -hmm. the whole rest of the day so then I feel like you're throwing away like I don't know just your your diet it's just not just your diet I just feel like gross I don't Mm -hmm. know I like to 
have I, I enjoy the day more than I enjoy the night. So when I'm ruining the following daytime sunlight summer day, I really just feel bad about it. And then also, I'm sure that you're like you're a very busy person and you have a lot of aspirations. So you're like, holy, f- that's like a whole day ruined and a whole set like a setback. Yeah, definitely. Especially like for me, we call Saturdays dadder days because it's like the one day that like Adam doesn't have anything to do. So we try yeah. to do something like all as a family so i can't like fuck up a dad or day i don't know Aww, anyways uh cute. so before we get into like me actually getting to know you more because i already know you <clears throat> i have a favor to ask you okay i need you to make an entirely new tiktok where you just do asmr because i love asmr and you have like the perfect voice for it it's a very i was saying it to adam last night i was like i want mia to do asmr her voice is so nice and he's like she does have a really good voice i'd be so good at it you really would be i just want to put you to sleep honestly though i do have a very soothing voice you do everyone's always told me that it's like i i calm people down in a lot of situations it's like a very happy, cheery voice without being overly cheery. Mm. So you don't get like annoyed listening to it. It's just pleasant. Aww. And I know that's kind of weird to describe a voice as like <laughs> cheery, but not too cheery. <laughs> I don't know. Like that's like the one thing that has always stand- stood out to me about you is your voice. And and lately, like I was like looking into ASMR on TikTok because I was like, maybe I could do that. It sounds mm-hmm. like kind of fun. And then I just got really sucked into the tingles and I felt like, I feel like an addict to yeah. the tingles. But anyways, if you ever find yourself with some free time, please make a TikTok it. channel. It, it's on my <laughs> list of things to do. You do want to do ASMR. Eventually, yeah. Because oh. I, I do think I have the voice for it. Yeah. Do you I, watch I, a lot of it? No, not terribly. Like I, I have, but whenever I listen to something to calm down, it's either meditation or spa music or um, binaural, binaural beats. Have you ever heard Mm-mm. of those? I don't know. Just it's It's – you use it with your headphones and I think what it does, I don't know too much about it, but like it, it sends like different frequencies at different times and it just, I don't know, it takes over my mind and I can really, really just concentrate on the sound and not think of anything else. So that's what you use as your trick to meditating? Mm-hmm. Do you meditate a lot? Um, Only if I'm like getting my eyelashes done or something <laughs> like that. Where you have if to I'm, be stationary for some time. Yeah, if I'm being honest, like also – when I think of meditating, it's really just anything that'll clear your mind. Yeah. So another thing I like to do is I like to sing. That's like another form of meditation okay, in my opinion. Okay, because you're just present in doing that. In that yeah, moment. and you're not really thinking or focusing on anything else. Yeah. It just kind of clears everything. So do you think that you make time every day to do it? Like, how did you get into meditation? Um, I think I'm just the type of person who needs that like time to kind of like sit down and have everything quiet because I'm a very stressed out person and I'm also very sensitive like Mm -hmm. I like a very calm environment all the time and I get very overstimulated Mm -hmm. so I think it's just my personality that's actually another reason I'm so flexible is because I used that um, when I was younger as a form of meditation is I would like turn on candles and really nice music and I would just like stretch and relax for an hour and it was just kind of my me time and uh, kind of diffusing how old were you when you started doing this 17 wow because i feel like now there's so many images of people meditating and doing yoga and encouraging meditation on social media now but when i was younger i don't think that i would have ever thought like i should do this to help myself reset kind of thing and as i've gotten older all the people that i see who are really successful and who i consider to be some of the smartest people they all are like we meditate we do this like they're very they're encouraging of it but it's like the last thing like I've tried all the self-help books and productivity hacks but I'm so scared to actually commit to trying yoga and meditation and I think it's because I know it's the right answer and I'm scared I'll I'll be bad at it I mean it's never gonna be a bad thing that's all I have to say you've never done yoga I mean I've done I've got I feel like I've gone to like three different uh beginners yoga classes and I always just got intimidated because I would be doing something wrong and then yeah. they, they'd call me out or like they'd come to modify my stretch, but I had yeah. like an injury so I couldn't actually handle the modification. Then I would get stressed out. You of, didn't like, know what you were doing. It's in a group setting. So you kind of felt exactly. like you didn't belong, right? Exactly. But yeah. so you started doing that at 17 and then you just stuck with it? Uh, Yeah. And then, yeah, uh, the, the stretching. Like I just realized early on that it helped me relax. Um, and then I obviously like I got into the adult industry and they all just loved it and turned into this whole sexual thing. 
Yeah. So how, how long do you think that you did? Were you always flexible or did you make yourself flexible? I think that I'm naturally flexible, but I definitely made myself flexible. The other thing is, is I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I was a teenager. I didn't know what I wanted to really do with my life. I didn't have a plan. So I really liked contortion. I thought it was really fun and Mm -hmm. sexy. So I kind of trained for that as well. Like I would push myself because I wanted to be able to do these cool things because I thought, you know, maybe I could do something like in performing arts eventually. In the porn industry, I feel like a lot of your fans, like they all know you do the really flexible, crazy things. I don't do it anymore. You don't do it anymore. But yeah, I feel Mm -hmm. like, I mean, you have amassed so many followers after sort of leaving traditional porn. So I feel Mm -hmm. like there's probably a large percentage of your audience that just found you on social media that has no idea that, that you are capable of doing all of these I things. I actually agree. Yeah. You know what they I mean? They have no I, idea. I didn't know. I don't. And then I think maybe when like Adam was researching you to interview on, you on his podcast, I think then I looked you up and I was like, oh shit, like that is a crazy <laughs> position. And I'm just like, why is our head between our legs? Yeah. Like, can you like describe all the different, like what is the craziest thing that you think was asked of you on set? Um, I would say, I would say the craziest thing would be to like suck dick with my head between my legs. Like I think at one point in one scene, there was like a penis between my feet and I had bent over backwards and sucked it. I don't fucking know. <laughs> like I can barely get myself to do like a regular foot job on a dildo because it uses so much lower ab strength. I can't either. I, honestly, yesterday, because I don't stretch anymore. Like I just, I don't care about it. And I like tried to do a little foot fetish thing. So I tried to put my foot in my mouth and then, like I could barely get my leg up there. I was like, oh no. Guys will request stuff like that as if it's just totally normal to, to, to be able to do it. Like guys have sent me a sample photo. Like, can you do this for a custom? And it's like, both feet would be right here behind your ears like I yeah I cannot fucking do that I don't know why you would just assume that I can do that for you <laughs> so you don't stretch that much anymore do you think that like doing it too much in the adult industry just like kind of turned you off from it it did because a lot of times after I would be done shooting well what would what would happen would be everyone that I shot for would expect something flexible from me and they wouldn't let me know beforehand so sometimes they'd have entire scripts set up that day like for browsers or something like that involving a bunch of flexible things and even a bunch of flexible positions um and i wouldn't have stretched that morning because i had no idea and i thought oh, okay it's just going to be a regular scene so i would end up i'm kind of a people pleaser at least i used to be i'm really not too much of a people pleaser anymore um but I would show up and I'd want to make everybody happy so I'd do my best and I would end up injuring myself and Mm -hmm. especially my back doing the back bends I feel like you're not you're not supposed to be getting fucked and moving around a bunch and you actually should really warm up everything before you get into that type of situation and I couldn't hold it for long without hurting myself yeah and they like when I do it, it's like a party trick. It's like five to ten seconds. But they'd be like, "No, we need at least a minute because it's they wanted sex positions." So I would end up hurting myself, um, and it just really scared me for you know what my body is going to be like later down the, ru- yeah. the line and my spine and my back and everything. So I just stopped doing it altogether. That's great. So when you mm-hmm. reached out, did did you reach out to an agent to to become a performer? Um. No, I had a... Like, did you tell someone, like, I can do these things, book me? Like, is that how you presented it? Or they just found out that you were flexible? I would show up and I would do things. Uh Uh-huh. And it got around... Oh, that's okay. It is very... I'm very soft-spoken. Word got around that I was flexible. Okay. Very early on. So, I mean, do you... Obviously, you're you're beautiful and you have, like, beautiful assets and stuff. But do you think that that was what really propelled you into being like really well known because most girls can't do super super flexible positions I think that that was one of the reasons for sure because Mm -hmm. it was something that wasn't really like a lot of people weren't doing so it did set me apart I also think it was obviously my ass my ass is very like it's very different it's It's very bubbly very bubbly it stands out um and then at the same time, I think I had a very girl next door look when I was younger. And I like genuinely was super, super sexual. And I genuinely loved what I was doing. Mm-hmm. So I, I personally think it was like the, it was those 
things all together that made me very popular in the adult industry i feel like no having known a lot of the top like 10 girls or whatever for the last six years one thing that i can know is that and this applies to you as well it's like attitude and personality off camera like Mm -hmm. you are just like a very friendly genial no drama like person and Mm -hmm. i think that is what helps girls go far because if you have a girl who's like just so hard to work with and so demanding a very specific look like a like a diva type basically yeah. then you're you're just not going to make it no matter how beautiful no one's you are work with them. Yeah. yeah so i think like that's a that's a big thing that people don't really think about um but so how what year and how old were you when you got into the industry i think it was 2012 and I was 19. 19. Okay, so it was one year after high school. You were just like, I'm going to go for this. Yeah. What were you doing up until that point? I was working at Sizzler as a hostess. Oh, my gosh. I actually <laughs> fucking hate Sizzler. I don't even know why I hate it so much, but I just don't remember having good experiences there I would as never. I'm so spoiled with food. Like, I just eat the best of the best. Now, I, you wouldn't catch me. I wouldn't be caught dead at a Sizzler. Yeah, I saw one recently closing down not far from here and was like, fuck yeah, take that shit away. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Sizzler, but I'm not a fan. Um, okay, so you're a hostess there. And then, like, how how did you end up getting in? Um, so my best friend at the time, she had needed money and a manager had found her online and she was the one who shot a couple of scenes and she told me what she was up to. And I was always the more promiscuous out of the two of us. And it just like a lot more sexual. And I really liked the idea and I was just very impulsive and I thought it sounded really fun. Like I didn't think of it as a career or anything Mm -hmm. like that. You just wanted to try it because you were curious. Yeah. Yeah. It was just, yeah, it was just exciting at the time because I'm from like a very small town. Like nothing really happened. I've always been a homebody. Like my entire teen years were incredibly boring. Like stayed in my room by myself watching Disney movies. Where exactly did you grow up? Inland Empire. Inland Empire. But you had a lot of siblings, right? Like. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a chaotic household. You're just in your room. I was just in my room. <laughs> just very like introverted type. Yeah. Yeah. I've mm-hmm. been, I've always been introverted. Were you, um, what, what do you think made you like so interested in sex or like um, promiscuous at that time? Were you like, like having a lot of sex as a, no. Uh, no, I mean, I did have sex, but not a lot because I was actually really, really shy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what made me so interested in sex. I think part of it well, I'm going to say one is probably daddy issues. But <laughs> Do you want to talk about your daddy honest. issues? I mean, I don't know. The thing is, yeah, we could talk about it. Okay. It's fine. So I don't know my biological father. And then my mom has been married, I think, five times. Okay. And growing up each time, it was, this is your new dad. Like, call him dad. So I've had like four different stepfathers. So I think part, I think that might have done something in the sense like, uh, of me having abandonment issues. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, I will say, just my core personality, I've always been a hopeless romantic. And I've just literally been that way my entire life. And so I think that, like, sex, in my opinion, is, like, the closest that you can get to somebody. Uh-huh. And it's just it's just intimate. So I think that's another reason I've always been so obsessed with it. I think that people hearing this might think, like, the opposite. Because that's what I think. Like, if you're a hopeless romantic, then, like, porn feels like anti-romance in a way Mm -hmm. because a lot of porn doesn't look very romantic you know what I mean well honestly I don't think porn is romantic okay um I think intimacy is romantic so there's a lot of and not even it's not even romantic like (laughs) so with with porn I wouldn't say it's romantic it's just very very intimate yeah so like those moments that you have, like looking looking into their eyes, et cetera, et cetera. Like that's all just like as intimate as you can get with somebody. Mm-hmm. And I was really enjoying like exploring that with different types of people. Did you feel like you fell for guys on set a lot in the beginning when it was new to you? I didn't fall for them. Okay. Um, I There was one guy that I developed a huge crush on. And I mean huge. And I ended up marrying him. And that was the most toxic relationship oh my I've gosh. had. How early into your, your career did you guys uh, meet I, and, and, and get was, together? He was my third scene Oh, ever. wow. And then I think like... I think within a month or two. So I realized I went to hook up with him. Like I had his number and I went to have sex with him only to realize that we were living in the same apartment complex. Oh my God. So it was like, what are the chances? (laughs) (laughs) And so do you think that your relationship really progressed because you guys just lived so close to each other and it was always there? 
Um, I, I don't know. I think that he was a, he was a, a very slutty male. <laughs> and I think that he had a, like a few different rounds of girls that he was fucking. And mm-hmm. I think we just really enjoyed having sex with each other. And I had a crush and I wasn't really like trying to, um, I guess, like put any labels on it, even though I, I, I wanted to. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't pushing him. You were trying to play it cool. Yeah, I was trying to play it cool because um, I was really, really young and he was, I think, eight years older than me. Um, but it, it just kind of progressed to feelings on both ends. And then It didn't end well, though. Yeah, because you guys got married. And how long were you guys married? Four years. Four years. Wow. Yeah. And then you guys divorced and then you got in another relationship <clears throat> and now you're in a, I'm like very interested in talking to you about relationships because you're always, <laughs> I'm always in, in relationships. relationships and I've <laughs> always just met people throughout my life where I'm like, oh, that's curious. That person's always in a relationship. Yeah. So the funny thing is, is I was single for a month and then I met my other boyfriend and I think we were together for four years and then I was single for a month and it was this year that I was single for a month and I was like, okay, it's been 10 years because I've had two really long yeah. relationships since I've been an adult. I've been like, okay, it's been 10 years. <laughs> like This year I'm going to be single for a long time. A month later, I'm in love. <laughs> like, yeah, I know because I <laughs> I met you in person in December and we you had just come off of your yeah. last relationship not your ex-husband the one after that and you were kind of like I'm just over it like I just need to be by myself I need to take all these opportunities that are coming my way yeah and then I saw you again like a month later and you're like Lana did I tell you I'm in love and I'm like (laughs) how does she keep falling in love I can barely meet people I like (laughs) so do you do you really feel like you are not looking for love and it just comes to you or do you feel like you just fall in love easily um I okay. This is my opinion. I don't I think it's partly my fault, but I think it's the men's fault too. Cuz I think that like they fall in love with me and they decide, "Hey, I like her. I'm going to date her." And then when I'm getting all this attention and someone's being really nice to me and the sex is really good, I start to like fall for it. And I'm like, "Okay, like I like this." And then I do fall in love easily. Wow. I feel like I have the opposite feeling when I'm newly single which hasn't happened in a long time obviously where I'm like nobody talked to me I need like I need like a sabbatical from relationships I just need my which is what you tried to do but I need sex at the same time this is so true. even though I'm not looking for relationships I'm still looking for like flirting and sex mm-hmm. and then that just like every time seems to end in a relationship you just keep meeting like good looking guys who are good at sex apparently they keep coming your way because they're they're getting you in somehow yeah well, they have to be. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's what, I'm assuming those are your standards. Good looking and yeah. also good at sex and yep. also nice I mean, you guy. don't know if they're good at sex at first, but if, if I come back for seconds, then yeah, they are. What have you learned from your marriage and your previous relationship that you think you like have have looked out for so, and, so that you don't have it in your next relationships? Because I feel like every relationship teaches us something about like what we don't like. Um, <clears throat> I'd say my first, my first marriage or – my ex-husband um I don't really like alpha males okay so the men that are like full of testosterone and manly men and et cetera et cetera I don't like them they're very aggressive but were you do you think you were into that when you were younger oh 100 percent. yeah yeah I thought it was so fucking hot and now like I see them just like ew (laughs) <laughs> like I see through your bullshit yeah I hate egos <laughs> like all of that just kind of is like a huge turn off to me um I would say with that one that's what I don't like um my second or my last relationship I felt like he was very insecure like mm-hmm. but very very insecure and didn't have a lot going on for himself outside of me Mm. And that's another thing that to avoid. Turns you someone, off. Yeah, someone who doesn't have their own thing going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see that. Because then that's a lot of pressure on you, too, to always be like they're everything all the time. Yeah, he was – so he was a photographer and a director. And, like, he had um, directed and stuff for, like, Black Draw. And he was, like, the photographer for Greg Lansky and stuff like that. So when we got together, like, he sort of started working, like, with me. But then it seemed like it turned into – our relationship was mainly just like 
I guess, work. And then he didn't have his own separate things outside of me. So it was very entangled. and Because he stopped working for these other companies and yeah. just started working for you. Yeah. And that's, in my opinion, never a good thing. Yeah. No, that's that's too much of you guys relying on each other in a way. Yes. Like, I don't, yeah, I think that I, that would be hard to uh, work around. But you guys lasted for a really long time. Yeah, but I was very unhappy for a lot of it. Mm, you just didn't want to break things off? Um, He, I, I just felt very stuck because like a lot of things that we did, like he was very entwined. And I will also say like he was my best friend. So I'm very introverted when I'm in a relationship. I'm very like, you're my person. I don't yeah. need friends, you know? Um, And so like I, I was very afraid to be alone, but. And give up your best friend in addition yeah, to your partner. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think he's a nice guy. There's a lot of things that I don't like. He, he is very sweet. But honestly, the reason I'm so, um, and it's actually really weird, but the reason I was so unhappy is because he had very severe intimacy issues. And so he never came on to me and never wanted to have sex with me. And oh. that lasted for years. And all the men who are choosing to listen to this right now are like, oh, yeah. hell no, he didn't. Are you kidding me? And, uh, keep in mind, like, I'm a little romantic. So I loved him and he was my best friend. So I was like, well, yours is the only opinion that matters to me. Yeah. Like, you're the only person I really want to have sex with. So the fact that he wasn't doing that, like, for years just made me feel like I wasn't sexy and I wasn't beautiful. Because what like, is he thinking? You have millions of followers. Like, you don't need my approval. Like, yeah, all these people clearly he would never, approve of I you. I think so. I think that he never wanted to really, like, compliment me or, or make me feel good because he already felt insecure and didn't want to put me, like, higher, higher. on that pedestal. Yeah, yeah, I feel like a lot of guys would probably feel for that guy and agree with him. Because yeah. I think that – but but I – I, I want these easy. guys to know that it's like it is it's kind of wrong even though they don't understand it because I've heard this from other girls too and I feel this myself like I could have the attention of the entire internet but if Adam didn't approve of or like what I was wearing or doing his opinion matters like and I, more so than people that yeah, you don't know I've been wearing my hair curly and like everyone loves it and Adam likes my hair straight more and I'm like that just makes me want to do my hair straight yeah. you know what yeah. I mean and like guys need to get that like it's we we like you we've chosen you for a reason so make us feel loved yeah. you know and like wanted yeah so like I understand it. I don't think it was malicious but at the same time it was it was years of like my self-esteem going from here to just wow. there like I just thought I was so unattractive like I it really fucked with me to be honest so you guys weren't even shooting that much content then since you we, were having sex for a living? The only time he would have sex with me was to shoot content with me. That was the oh, only that time. Oh, that sucks. So it, it literally, we would go over a month without him like off camera coming on to me. And he never once said like that he thought that was weird? I mean, No, he did. I would, I would cry to him every single week and I'd be like... I love you, but I'm not happy. I'm never going to be happy. Yeah. Like, this isn't going to change. And I'm very loyal when I'm with somebody and I decide, okay, I'm with you. Like, I try to do everything I can to make it work. Um, and so I would tell him and he would understand and he'd be like, I, you know, I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try to do that. But then even when he would, like, try to come on, uh, come on to me, like, to try and appease me, one, it would only last for like a couple days, then he would forget and like mm. go about like doing his own life. But also, it's it's not hot because I've literally had to beg you yeah, to exactly. come on to me. So like it's not even sexy. It's kind of like just pathetic at that point. I know. It's a chore. And then you yeah, you don't feel good about it because yeah. you know it's like it's like telling you don't someone have what to gift ask. to buy you and they give it to you and you're like, Cool, this <laughs> yeah. is you know, yeah, you don't want to have to ask and it, that makes a huge difference for someone to just be able to intuit like your needs. And it's, that wasn't the match for you. Yeah, it wasn't the match. So you guys didn't, in the beginning, you guys didn't have more sex? Like when you're, when the relationship was very new? <clears throat> we did when it was very new. Um, And I think what happened, so he was a fan of mine. Like I was mm. his number one porn star. And he was like exploring and having like fun with, oh, this is like me your and Malkova. Girl. Yeah, your fantasy girl. But then I think as he got to know me more, he realized I'm actually very vanilla. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm very into couple sex. I'm not kinky. I'm not perverted. <laughs> like, I'm and you very killed much the fantasy for him. Yeah, I'm very much like just make love to me, you know. And um, I think like I think that 
he, I think he just really likes he likes perverted sex. I think he fell in love with me as a person, but he lost interest in me sexually in a lot of ways because like his thing was intimacy issues, and I'm very like very, be intimate, yeah. you know, like when we were having sex early on, it was him trying out a lot of kinky stuff and me being down for it because it was like a new partner to have sex with. So you're trying new things. You're trying to like be extra and appease them. But then after you get comfortable, or at least I do, I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm not in the mood. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, okay, I'm, I'm over this. I, I, you already probably did that type of sex a lot in your, yeah. uh, in your adult work life. That's really interesting. Yeah, I guess. Because I, re- I recently read a book where the, the guy fell in love with a girl because he read her writing and then he starts dating her and and, and he's like, wait, she's not the girl from the book. And then yeah. he kind of gets over her. And yeah. But he wasn't the one who broke it off. You had to break it off still, even though you guys weren't really having sex. Yeah. Okay. So you broke things off with him mm-hmm. and now with you, you're with your new guy and I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please tell me his name. His name's Rich. Rich. Right. You told me that before and I forgot. Okay. So now you're with Rich. Do you feel like you found your like intimacy partner who's gonna fuck you the way you want oh he does yeah (laughs) okay okay how did you guys meet and how did it progress so fast I was so shocked when you told me that you had another boyfriend I was shocked too (laughs) um so we met on New Year's and I went there to do a stream like I wasn't even gonna go to Austin I was gonna go to New York and I was gonna do a YouTube channel with like one of my girlfriends um but I ended up getting COVID and I started to feel better a couple of days before New Year's. And I tested negative. So I was like, OK, I guess I'll go to Austin. I'll go spend in my mind. I was like, I'll go spend New Year's with a bunch of nerds. That'll be fun. <laughs> you know, I just thought that's cute. Um, and so he was there. I didn't really think too much of him the first day, but I was there for a couple of days. And over the weekend, I just I developed a bit of a crush on him. Mm. So like I ma- kind of made it up in my mind when I left. I'm like, I'm going to try to hook up with him. And I wasn't thinking like dating. I was just like, I want to fuck him. Um, and I'm also the type of person where I don't like, I have to have it in my mind that I'm going to fuck somebody before I do. Like I don't do it. It's never a surprise. It's never a surprise. It's never like, oh, like, um, you know, you can take me home the same night. Like I have to think about it for a while and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Um, which makes sense because you need to like, you, since you really are into intimacy and true connection, you kind of need to know a little bit more about someone. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, so basically, I don't know, he came to New York or LA a couple weeks later and like, I I obviously I hit on him and we had sex and then just didn't leave for the week. (laughs) Like, like I think we just hung out with each other the entire week. And I think by the second week that we hung out with each other, like I already knew I was in love with him. I was, and I, I didn't plan it. It was like, it was really, really cute. Um, that sounds really cute and really sweet. Yeah. And then you guys moved in together? Like right away? Yeah. I mean, I would say not officially because he still had kept his apartment in New York, but he hasn't been to it all all year. He's actually in New York right now moving, like and packing all this stuff to bring it to L.A. So he moved from one coast of the United States to the other to be with you, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That sounds romantic. It's very cute. Wow. It's very sweet. He's very, very sweet. He's the, he's the anti-alpha guy that you wanted. He's not, not, not to diss he's him. He's not but alpha, like, but I, and I love that. Like, I think it's the, I love how sweet he is. I just find it like the, I find it the most adorable thing in the world. And when I f- see him being like sweet and vulnerable and adorable and nerdy, it makes me just want to fuck him. There is something hot about that. The guy so, just like letting go of the way that society is telling him that he has to be in the world and just truly being like a human with you. Yeah, that, that's very sexy. I'm very happy for you because I didn't know that about your last relationship that you guys like weren't really having sex. That's like the last thing that I would have thought of just because like yeah. you're very good looking. Thank he's pretty, you. He's, I've heard good looking and mm-hmm. I didn't really tell people. I was pretty embarrassed over it. I could see that. Yeah. Because yeah. I think it's a, it's one of those things where as soon as you say it, it's like an automatic red flag to people like yeah. this relationship isn't working and it's not what going to work. So what yeah. are you doing? But if you're not ready to really let go of it. Then and you don't want people telling you that. So you don't want yeah, to put it out there. Yeah, exactly. I would I would definitely have probably acted in the same way. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, I don't know. I'm so sorry. It's like, <laughs> I'm sorry that, that, that your relationship was like that. I, I think it's – I kind of think it's funny now because I really don't think people would have expected that I went a couple of years, like, hardly having sex at all. Yeah, you are a top 10 Pornhub trending 
porn star for like the last I don't know how many years in a row and your boyfriend wouldn't fuck I'm, you. I'm also extremely sexual. Yeah. I'm a sex every single day type of person. Every single day. Every single day. Is there like, like a time of the day? You'll fuck me more. I like it at night before I go to bed because it puts me to sleep. Okay. But like if somebody's willing to fuck me more time, more than once, like I'm super happy about it. Wow. I just love sex. You're so, you're so, your sex drive like didn't change at all with porn. No, it didn't change. I still have the high sex drive. I just think that I got a lot more vanilla because I feel like I've explored so much on camera that I know what I like yeah. and what I don't really care about. Yeah, in the beginning, you're you're pretty new. You're curious. You're like, okay, I'm going to try everything out, try everything out, try everything out, and then you try everything out. And you're like, okay, this is what I like and this is what I'm going to do and it's just going to stay like this, which yeah. is so nice that you get to have that experience. And I think that people who – hear about people who do porn or whatever they they just always want to say like hasn't it ruined sex for you and like maybe it ruins some sex for you but it doesn't mean it ruins all sex for you i feel like if you're shooting i mean it's hard to say so when i was with my first husband i was shooting a lot and that was the most sexual i've ever been um and even off camera with him that was the most sexual I've ever been I would shoot like multiple times a week he would shoot almost every day and we were still having sex like four or five times a day for years like he was a very Whoa. very sexual person that's a lot mm-hmm. that is it a was, fucking lot it was too much that was one of okay. the things I hated towards the end of it I was like stop it because if he, I wouldn't want to have sex because I was tired it would be a fight so that was one of the things that actually like towards the end really got to me um, my vagina would hurt so bad if I was having that much sex. I was a pervert though. I'd be, I'd like get turned on by the fact that it was sore. I was like, oh, I got fucked so hard. That I'm super <laughs> oh my sore. Gosh. You know, like <laughs> I don't know if I can handle that. <laughs> I'm a, li- I can be a pervert, but it's like it's about very specific things. Um, and then shooting content for myself with my ex, he was like the main person that I shot for. And so since he wasn't fucking me off camera, and he'd only do it on camera. I was very resentful. Mm. It was like, in my head, I was like, you shouldn't get to fuck me on camera if you're not going to like, if you're not going to do it off camera. So I'd already kind of be in that type of mentality. But that was also how I was making money. I didn't live in California. I didn't live around around a lot of talent. I didn't want to fuck other talent because I was, you know, when I'm in a relationship, I actually do settle in and I'm not looking around at other guys. Yeah. Um. So it was just – it did make me resent it a lot, if I'm being honest. Yeah, no, totally. I, I would be so pissed. Like, oh, now you, you're you down to fuck me? And it's because you're turning on, like, the Mia Malkova porn star yep. that people are paying yep, for. Yep, because I'm completely different on camera. Yeah, of course. Oh, that would make me so mad. <laughs> yeah. I can see how that well, – like, you're like, okay, I'm trying to make money right now. I need to make a video. But, like, we're definitely going to fight about this after. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, I don't actually want your dick in me because it doesn't deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> Last night, I had it's it put convenient. it put it in my calendar, like, Lena and Adam scene because, like, I have to put it in the calendar so that we can actually do it. But then I just wanted to have sex and not have to worry about, like, being on camera and playing a yeah. part. And I was like, fuck it. Who cares? Let, let's just have regular sex. Yeah. But I was, I'm, like, able to do that in my relationship. But for you... I'm, I'm, I don't know. I know I said sorry already, but like that, that really sucks. So do you feel like you enjoy making content a lot more now? I'm sure you're just doing more like solos and girl, girl. It's all solo and girl, girl. Um, and I do like, I like being able to just do what I want when I want. Like something I'm trying to do a lot of, more of is less like fake coming and mm-hmm. more actually trying to make myself come. Yeah. So like, instead of like playing around with my fingers too much, like I will tease myself, but I'm always bringing up my vibrator, you know, because I do that off camera anyway. Like, yeah. I love my vibrator. So it, it's just things like that. Um, you know what I was going to ask you? I did. I, <laughs> I wanted to ask you because you do a lot of threesomes on camera. Do you guys ever like fight beforehand, get into some sort of fight beforehand? And then you're like, oh, fuck, we have to like have sex with, you know, so and so tomorrow. And I'm really not feeling it because I'm upset now. Um. Honestly, I can't really think of like a fight, but Adam has this way that he is when he's on a work day that I've been trying to get him to break. And it's like, you know, when you go to set, you kind of have to be flirty with Mm -hmm. the other talent and create this like enjoyable vibe and environment before you're going to have sex. Yeah. So that the sex could be good. Right. He has to like definitely make the woman like the woman feel like. But he's very like in work mode. (laughs) And so he'll be here at the plug talk house and he'll be like on his phone doing emails not talking to anybody not engaging 
and we'll be on the couch and we're about to start doing the plug talk interview part and like we're all kind of waiting there for him to get off his phone and, work, and he's like not creating the right vibe and so those are the i'm kind of like we're gonna about to have sex like you know so i've been trying to tell him a little bit more like hey i know you're in work mode and you're just like a very chop chop let's get this you're done. like flirt more mother yes and and yeah. and the times that he has gotten more flirty with me and done it and then we've done a scene the scene has come out so much better and i've kind of yeah. been like hey babe see and he's like because i get hotter i get more turned on yeah. and doing the most yeah and so i'm kind of just like hey like you got to act like this you it's know? actually funny you say that because that was another issue i had shooting content with my ex is like we would go through and he'd shoot all my photos and teases and like everything for the set beforehand but like he would get he would never like I said even when we were about to do that for content he would never be like oh you're so hot or anything like that if anything we'd always get into like little tiffs and arguments because you know he was just he got annoyed with me very easily and we get into, into fights over how the content it was would gonna be. look yeah yeah so like all the time like it was always a vibe and he never like even tried to turn me on and I tell him like this is fucking miserable and I have to do it because it's work but like I fucking hate this yeah and then that's like your that's your and partner. I would do yeah and I would do it anyway and no I I, I totally there's a understand. lot of scenes out there that I was angry and not about it oh my gosh <laughs> Well, I'm glad that you're in a relationship I don't anymore. think anyone knows what I'm saying. I was fucking... You get to get it all off your chest pissed. right now. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. I mean, I know because I'm like in a relationship with someone that I perform with that it's I, I know how, how bad it could be yeah. like to to have to be on camera and be smiley and suck their dick and then you're like fucking hate yeah. you right now. <laughs> yes. Like I'm gonna yes. fight it off. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I can't really, like I think if I ever got into an actual true fight then I would just be like the content's done. Like we're not fucking doing this well, right now, you know? I've gotten into a true fight with my ex-husband like on set for companies a couple of times. Oh wow. Whereas like we're actually like like saying terrible things to each other. They would and book then, you guys a lot together. Yeah. Even after you guys were like together, together mm-hmm. married. Yeah, they would. And they would buck us with other women too. So like we do like threesomes and things like that. So like sometimes we would get into actual fucking fights and then I would still have to do the scene because once again, I was a people pleaser. So I was like, oh, well, I'm already in hair and makeup. We already shot like the, the stills. We already did all this. Like I can't really leave. Yeah. So the entire time I'd be like, I fucking hate him and you actually have to put on a smile and pretend like you're loving it put on a smile take the facial Mm -hmm. act all giddy and happy and then what you go you leave the set and then what do you do just not silent treatment for like i would do silent treatment yeah Yeah. i think you need like i don't think silent treatment is like a super mature way to handle things but i feel like you need like the break so that you don't get so angry and say the worst things yeah honestly i don't do like i try not i try to be as uh, not toxic, non toxic as possible. I used to be very toxic. Like I was mm-hmm. young and like you know, um, I do still do silent treatment, but I don't do it for a long. It really is just me stepping aside, deciding how I really feel about things. Because a lot of the time when I'm angry, if I really just think about it and like process it, I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm not actually that angry, you know. Or so like- it's create some reason behind yeah the yeah and then like I, I'm fine and you know we can move on but if I have somebody like trying to get a reaction and trying to understand what's going on before I fully understand my emotions I'm gonna say mean things that I don't actually mean yeah so I do like to like step away no I think that's think a very very mature way to handle things and I think that it, it could seemingly on the surface seem like non-toxic but it really isn't it's no, like, it's like you really, know yourself and mm-hmm. you know that you need space and time yeah and uh I definitely handle myself in a similar way or try to I think I've said one mean thing back to Adam when maybe it was like two weeks ago and then I was like don't do that that was Aww. bad <laughs> but then we had to separate so that we didn't keep doing it you know I'm the same way I don't want to actually be mean to my partner because like I love them like yeah. I, I want to even if I'm angry at them like I my the ultimate goal is to make up because we love each other yeah. And you know it's going to blow over and you guys are yeah. going to be fine in yeah. like a couple hours or the next day. So it's like, why why do the most in mm-hmm. the moment? Yep. Okay. Well, so now you're in a really happy relationship. So what do you guys do together the most since you did you used to do Twitch or you do still do Twitch? Um, I'm getting back into you're it. You're getting back I, into I, it. I mainly just jump on other people's streams right now. Okay. So do you go on his stream a lot together? I wouldn't say too much, but sometimes, yeah. Okay. So what are you doing on a day-to-day basis? What does Mia Malkova do? <clears throat> I'm very boring. <laughs> so 
I like to work out and do some sort of exercise, but mainly I'm a homebody. I'm an introvert. I like to be home. I watch a lot of TV. I watch a lot of movies and I also play games. So like right now I've been playing a lot of Dead by Daylight, but pretty much that's it. I'm home. I'm organizing. I'm like taking care Mm -hmm. of things and I'm watching TV or I'm playing games. And then Rich is usually like he's either streaming or he's on the couch playing magic on his iPad (laughs) like while I'm watching TV or something. What do you guys bond over then on on a daily basis, like checking in with each other? Um... I don't feel like we do a lot like other than movies and TV Uh shows. I don't feel like we do because he's actually a homebody too. Like it's very hard to get him to leave the house. So neither one of us leave the house. So I think like as far as bonding, I think it's more just like cuddling. Yeah. We're we're both like extremely cuddly people. Were you always a homebody? Yeah. So interesting. I hate leaving the house. Like every time I leave the house, I'm so excited to get home. (laughs) I was always the opposite my entire life. I was like, couldn't wait to find an excuse to leave the house. Like, let me just let me just go to the store and buy like one soda. Like, I don't know. Let me just get the hell out of here. But now I really enjoy being at home and controlling my environment and just having all the stuff that I need. And I do have pets now, too. So I I feel like I have to always be home. Yeah, I miss them. Like, I'm always thinking about them when I leave. And I'm always excited to get back. That is, like, a big part of why I want to get back home as quick as possible. So your puppies? Yeah, I'm obsessed with them. <laughs> I can't believe you have four of them. No, no, no. I have two. I don't know why I put <laughs> both Oh, hands. I okay. <laughs> I was listening to you talk. I did have. I did have four. So when me and my ex separated, um, I... It was actually quite funny. He was saying at the time when we separated, he was like, I'm not able to take any of them. And I was like, well, I can't. Did you guys adopt them together? Yeah. Well, there was one that we hadn't adopted together that I've had for um, 10 years. Her name is Tinkerbell. And I actually, I ended up rehoming Tinkerbell. It's a long story, but basically like. I knew for myself, I was like, I can't have four dogs. Like, yeah, I'll buy myself. Lot. It's, yeah, I, it was it was already a lot with help. Um, and one of the dogs had attacked Tinkerbell before. She was like a little old teacup poodle. But she's very feisty, but she doesn't have any teeth. And she had like bit into her back and shook her. So I was always really, really terrified of something like that happening again yeah. to her. Um, but this dog that attacked her is the mother of my favorite dog, who oh. no matter what, I wouldn't get rid of. So they're a super bonded pair and they love each other. So I was like, I can't separate them. So I ended up taking those two. And then I found a home, like a really, really good home for Tinkerbell. And then we had gotten a new puppy together. And she's in an amazing home as well. Like I check in wow. with the I check in with both of the families often and they're both just so in love with So you're not gonna get any more pets. You're good for now. No, no, no. No more pets. They're so much work. I feel like every day I wake up in my life is just a zoo. I have Parker, like she's just like asking me for breakfast constantly now that she could talk. And then I have I have to take the dog out and I'm trying to get the dog to go out by itself and pee. And the dog's like, No, but I need you to come with me. Aww. And then I have the cats and I I keep thinking this, like I I don't know when I'm ready to get pregnant again because it's just an added layer of chaos. But then I went and got three pets. But I feel like my life feels more full. I feel like you wanted the pets to not get pregnant again. (laughs) You're like, I kind of want another baby, but not yet. So we're going to go get pets. Yeah. But it does like it's more work, but you just you do feel more satisfied. I do. I did. I did a podcast the other day. I finished like my whole day and then I put Parker to bed. So I couldn't get my Parker cuddles. But then I sat on the couch and like the dog and the two cats just sat on me. And I was yeah. like, I, I could do this forever. Like, yeah. this is amazing. Yeah. And the cutest thing to me is seeing the dog and the cat's dynamic because the girl cat is really into the dog. And then so the dog, Ralphie is like cleaning her like he's like licking her fur and i was just like adam look animal planet shit right here like this is so cute that's how the mom is with her puppy (laughs) she 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 grooms her every single day and she's been doing that since she was a puppy and it's like very very relaxing for both of them it's so sweet i feel like i could watch my pets all day and i feel like now that i have two cats that are the same age and they're babies they're kittens they're like constantly chasing each other throughout the house and I feel like I spend at least 30 minutes like documenting them in the house like they're sitting somewhere new like I gotta catch this I gotta get this honestly like right before I left here I was holding one of my dogs staring into her eyes singing to her (laughs) like that was what I was doing before I came here if you ever decide to be a mom you're gonna be a great mom (laughs) do you think you want to be a mom um 
I've been very back and forth right now. I'm saying yes. So I'll be perfectly honest. I've always wanted to be a mom because I've always had like very, I've always been very, very maternal and I've known it and I've also been told it my entire life. Um, but being in my last relationship, I think just because I was so unhappy, I was like, no, no, never going to mm. happen. Like, I don't want a baby with you. Um, but I also probably didn't see past being with him. So I just was like, oh, just I don't want a baby in general. Um, but now I've, I just turned 30 and now I'm not going to lie. I've been getting like hardcore baby fever. Like I see them in movies and TV shows. And I'm just like, I want one right now. Like, I want to get pregnant right now. But then I don't. But then I also think I have, like, five years to have two if I wanted to. <laughs> like, no. Yeah. See, I used to think like that, too, before I got pregnant. It's supposed to – yeah, but it's supposed to be not as healthy. Like, there's a higher risk of complications for you and the baby if you have a baby past 35. Yes, but I, I – I keep going to like mommy and me classes and Parker's dance classes and Parker's music classes and whatever. I'm like the youngest mom in the room in a lot of these rooms. And I know that that's not the case in every city. The demographic is different everywhere you go. But like I I am I'm the youngest mom in a lot of the rooms I'm in. And uh, that just tells me that it's it's okay. It's okay. It's like a common yeah. thing. I was pregnant at the same time as Holly Randall when she was 42 and she got pregnant oh. naturally and had the baby and she had an easier, smoother you're labor right. and pregnancy than I did. You're right. I have time. You do have time. And honestly, <laughs> I wish we like were able to be preg- get pregnant older into our li- later okay. into our life and we're able to live longer because I keep saying like if I could have gotten pregnant at 50 but lived to be like 100, then I would have done that just because I do wish that I could still be selfish right now and yeah. go on and travel. And I could, I could, I could get a nanny and travel, but I just like, I couldn't cause I would be leaving like my whole heart at home yep. and I wouldn't be present on my vacation. But, um, so take your time and it's okay. <laughs> Actually, the funny thing is that's the only reason I would ever say like before that I didn't want a baby, not cause I didn't love babies. I've always been obsessed with pregnant women and babies. Like mm-hmm. I've played the Sims for 20 years. That's all I do is I like make a happy family, get her knocked up and I raise the children. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm planning for this. <laughs> yeah, that's all I do on the game. Um, but I like in my mind as well, I'm like, I want to be selfish. Like if I don't want to do anything and I want to play dead by daylight all day or even the Sims all day, you can't do that if you have a baby. <laughs> no, I, I, I could not do that. I mean, you do get time to yourself when the baby sleeps, but it's like the way my life is right now is Parker goes to bed at seven and I have like maybe two or three hours before I have to go to bed. But a lot of that time is spent like preparing for the next day or reading a potty training book or yeah. so it, it is like so much of your time but it is very rewarding oh, of course and especially yeah. when they're like older and they're in their toddler years and they can actually like start talking and you want to sh- do these things for them because you oh, love absolutely. them so much it's, even if it is exhausting yeah and it's it's like it's so fun watching them explore the world and it's so fun to be able to have an excuse to do childlike things for yourself you know what I mean I do know what you mean because when I was married to my ex uh he had a daughter and she was my stepdaughter and I met her when she was four so like I experienced a lot of those things with her like a lot of the movies and things that I wanted to like I wanted to show her because I left I had an excuse and seeing her get like excited about it yeah and be interested in it yeah exactly in things that I love too is always really fun it it is things I look forward to I'm like uh do I want to go and be on like a boat in Miami and partying and drinking it's like no not really like be home with my baby yeah it is it is sound like liberating to be by yourself and in a bikini or whatever but I, I do think that I'm like gonna take Parker to a like Sesame Street opened a theme park in San Diego and I'm like so excited because to watch she's her gonna be watch so it. Excited. She's gonna yeah. be so excited. She's like talks about Elmo and Big Bird and whatever every fucking day. Um so I'm excited about that because I did hear you say on another podcast that you didn't think you wanted children. Yeah. And not that I think everyone should have to have children, but it I, I feel like I get the vibe from you that you're going to be a great mom one day. Thank you. Thank you. I keep changing my mind, but uh-huh. I will say like if we're talking about core personalities, I've always wanted a baby. It was probably only like the last three years that I, I was like, oh, no, no, and I don't. And now, <laughs> now I have like hardcore baby fever again. And But you're on birth control. I'm on birth control. So that's yeah. okay. So you won't get just a surprising knock up. No. <laughs> 
speaking of babies, we should probably talk about um, your little debacle with Sidemen right now. Your little bee. Speaking of pregnant. Speaking of pregnant. <laughs> yeah, I actually didn't know about this until last night. I just posted to my story like, what should I talk about with Mia? And someone was like, talk about the beef with Faith. And I was like, who the fuck is Faith? And uh, I got a nice little synopsis on YouTube. Do you want to explain what happened? Yeah, I feel like it's calming down now, thankfully. Um, but basically, I was invited to do their Sidemen Tinder dates. And I have never heard of the Sidemen before. Me Apparently, neither. they're very... You, ne- you neither, right? I only heard about it because Sky told me she was going to be in their YouTube video. So then I looked it up. But like, I don't know if they're just bigger in the UK. But I didn't know. I don't know about a lot of YouTubers. Me so. either. Me either. Yeah. So I'd never heard of them. But I saw their channel. I was like, oh, they're like really popular. And then I had heard that Logan Paul was going to be on it. I was like, well, I know who that is. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, sure. I'll come. That sounds fun. Um. And one of the guys made a stuck joke. He fell off of his chair and he was like, I'm stuck. And I was like, let me help you. So in order to get somebody unstuck, like the joke is you fuck them. Yeah. So I went over there to make it seem like I was about to ride him. And I basically like squatted down. So I straddled him, squatted down, jumped off instantly. Like, yeah. I never actually sat on the guy. I never touched him. But then there was an uproar um, because when the video came out, his pregnant girlfriend was very unhappy that I had touched him and you know like I guess sat on him and I just want to say I didn't sit on him yeah like I feel like that would be weird if you just sit on people you don't know that this crossing a boundary I mean I guess it's crossing a boundary for her for me to even like invade his bubble but also I feel like when you're making content you don't plan things out like that yeah. you don't know what's gonna happen um so I don't know. I saw her TikTok and I didn't think too much of it. I was like, I wasn't sure if she was actually mad at me or not because I didn't think it was a big deal. What I was wondering was like the YouTube video was clearly filmed and then came out much later than it was filmed, maybe like 10 days later. But like, did he not tell her? He told her and I only know this because I looked through her comments on her TikTok Uh and someone had asked and she said, yes, I've been mad for weeks. Um, I feel like if you're going to be mad, then you should just not let your partner be in a Tinder dating YouTube video her for, thing, to begin with. Her thing, because I read all the comments because honestly, when she first did the TikTok, I was like, I don't know these people. Is she really mad? So I was reading the comments. I was like, oh, she is mad. Um, but she had said, well, I, I don't mind anything else, but touching and having somebody sit on your partner's crotch is crossing the boundaries. So... I think that one, I think it was miscommunication because she thought like I had sat down on him and yeah. I didn't actually sit down on him. Um, and that's all fine. Like, I don't care that she was mad. Like, it's OK. She could be upset or whatever. Um, what I didn't like was she was very she was very much slut shaming me in her comments, which I thought was very uncalled for. Yeah. Just because you've done porn and have an OnlyFans. Yeah. And I yeah exactly well she was just saying things like oh she takes pipe for a living and like someone had said boxing match like between you two and she's like yeah sure like it'll be a nice change from her like pussy being the only thing that gets beaten I'm just like it's so unnecessary yeah it really is I feel like the only reason she got away with it is because she's pregnant so everyone (laughs) automatically has to feel bad for her yeah she's she's pregnant and then I'm the home wrecking porn star (laughs) even Uh, though I don't know who her guy was I don't care yeah i don't care Your relationship it was all like a joke yeah i didn't i didn't even remember what the fucking guy looked like i thought what happened was funny and went about my life you know um but it, i th- i think it's over now it is what it is has he reached out to you no no and i don't think he's happy with the situation either like a i don't think any of us are i don't think we any of us like each other basically yeah, I, I mean, you showed me a clip of them talking, and I just about I didn't them. I didn't like how he talked about me because like I was seeing what was going on, and he just kept saying, "Oh, a porn star." The it, it, I felt like that was one dehumanizing, but it just it also just seemed very like how he was talking about the girls, like saying, "Oh, pack your bags, go home." Nobody wanted to stay and hang out with you anyway. Like yeah, like I you didn't guys even are, know who the fuck you were. You guys are using porn stars and OnlyFans girls to make your video bigger and better and more attractive to people to watch but then you're also shaming them for showing up and like doing their job and acting on camera yeah yeah that's kind of fucked up (laughs) I'm not a fan yeah that's annoying um well we got we got we figured out what happened but yeah I saw that and I was like I'm so confused she's really pissed about that because for me it's like it's like being mad at an actor for like kissing 
in a scene where it was required, even though nothing like nothing even like kissing obviously didn't even happen yeah and it's you know i'll be perfectly honest just my opinion because i'm allowed to have an opinion on it i don't think he did anything bad no i don't either it one it was for content he didn't know i was gonna make the joke and afterwards like jokingly he jumped up and he was like i have a child on the way i have a child on the way and he ran to the no side yeah like he made it all very funny there wasn't any sort of like sexual tension or yeah he's like acknowledging the situation in yeah. a way yeah so i don't really think he did anything wrong i thought he was very entertaining um but and also in on in my defense i don't think i did anything wrong either because i didn't actually i had no intention of touching the guy yeah like i just wanted to make a joke so like kind of like if you're about to do something you kind of go for it but then you pull back that was kind of the joke like I didn't yeah. actually sit on him I didn't actually want to touch him in any way. Does this make you like not want to collaborate with people as much? It did. Yeah, it kind of did. Just because they're like using your like because you made the video bigger. You're Mia Malkova, and then all of a sudden, and then how he talked about yeah. me and how she reacted. Yeah, it did make me kind of think that like okay, well how how he was talking saying you know oh pack your bags go home. It's like well. I did you a favor. Yeah, you invited me here. I helped make the video bigger. Yeah, Yeah. I was invited. Like, you didn't just do me a favor. I didn't even know who you were. Yeah, Um, that's really fucking annoying. And I, I'm I'm sure, yeah, it just made me feel like underappreciated. And yeah, I don't want to collaborate with them again. That's I don't think they're all terrible. No, yeah. Just that one. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I do think, like, I'm happy that more, uh, I guess, traditional influencers or creators or YouTubers are like, actually collaborating with more girls too. in the adult industry it's like makes it things more normal yeah and um just gives girls more opportunities to reach other audiences and stuff but it, it's unfortunate that you had a, a little bit of a bad experience yeah there. and then i felt like it was a step back as well because of the things that his girlfriend were saying and yeah. there was a bunch of women like cheering her on for saying these things yeah. because they looked at me as like the home wrecking porn star so i felt like that was a setback as well yeah that's just true because there are so many people who just hear the word porn star and it's like a bad word in their mm-hmm. mind and it's just furthering that idea even though you didn't you literally did nothing <laughs> I think think it's like more of like kind of like a cultural thing too since like they are from the UK. I just feel like it's kind of normalized the influencers here like collabing now with like adult entertainment. Like what is that? What is the industry like over there? I don't know. I mean, there's not like a big porn industry in the UK is there? It's not a huge porn industry. I don't I don't know if I necessarily think it's a culture thing. I think that she's pregnant that's her guy she's probably like already not terribly comfortable with the idea of like him being around porn stars and only fans girls yeah then to like hear that one of them sat on him even yeah. though i didn't sit on him oh i i, I bet I, she was just like fuck this i feel like you know some girls think like oh she does only fans just porn like she's she, trying to fuck she my must guy. She want to fuck, yeah she has yeah. to there's no way she could and leave it's not alone. even just girls like it's men that think that way too like if that's they only true. see you do, like one way on you know on social media they think that that's how you are just all the time yeah and it is yeah it's you're completely easy, untrue you're a cheater it's just yeah. like the stereotypes that they think about i'm girls not who make easy content. i'm so difficult to have i'm so unbelievably picky you play hard to get or you just like you no picky? if i no i don't play hard to get because if i want somebody like i'll fuck you the same night like okay I, I, it's just i don't want people <laughs> like, <laughs> like, nope, I, not you yeah not you, like not I, you. I wanna i wanna like them i wanna crush on them yeah in order like i wanna have that sort of feeling in order to have sex with them okay yeah no i i and like with you you did traditional porn and then you left the traditional porn industry but you're still very proud of it you still speak very highly of it you yeah. don't want anyone to throw shade on you or the industry in any way and so I respect that you're upset about how they talked about you because I feel like there has been, you know, some girls like they just want to sort of like be like, oh, okay, this is my past. And like, I'm not, you know, they really want to distance themselves from it a lot. And you don't do that. And I think that's really cool because you do have a big name and there are people who are not aware so much about the traditional porn industry and they're, they're getting your perspective and it's, you're not painting, trying to paint it in a negative light. Yeah. And here's the thing with, I, I know a few people like that and I think that's perfectly fine. Like, you know, if you are actually ashamed of something, you don't want to be seen that way mm-hmm. and distance yourself, like more power to you, whatever you want. But the way that I look at it, I will 
always be a porn star. Like no matter, yeah. it doesn't matter what I do, what I go on to do. Like I, I will always be considered a porn star. It will always be attached to my name. There's mm. really no point in hiding from it. Yeah. And I'm not ashamed of it. Like I had a lot of fun and it really like, it, it gave me everything that I have today. And I'm very happy with my life. Like I'm very mm-hmm. happy with how things turned out. Like I have so much like freedom to do whatever I want to do. Minus the fact that you're in a relationship, is there anything that could make you come back to the industry and make you do one last scene? Um, for like a production company, obviously you shoot for yourself on your OnlyFans. I would do girl girl things, and it mm. would probably be if it was like a fun feature or something like that. But if I'm being perfectly honest, I haven't really liked shooting with guys for years. Mm, like, why I, is that? I'm not, I don't think I have like as bad of like validation issues as I used to. I think that that was part of the reason that I like loved sex so much with these different guys when I was shooting is because like it made me feel like super, super sexy and validated. Mm -hmm. Even though they were being booked to shoot with you, it wasn't like them coming after you. It was like, well, they were were booked to shoot with me. But like you said, it's a vibe. So like beforehand, it'd be like, oh my God, I get me in love today. You're so fucking sexy. Flirting with you. Yeah, exactly. So like I felt very, very wanted. And I don't know, just over the years, I feel like I kind of matured and I grew up and like, nothing wrong with it but this is just like what i noticed about myself Mm -hmm. i kind of i don't know i feel like more respect towards myself to where like i don't need that validation yeah from other people or other men yeah i could see that i feel like when you're younger you feel like the male attention is like how you feel maybe exactly like sexier like I feel like I did that a lot when I was younger before I was in relationships I was just like they must like me if they want to have sex with me or like I must be good which, enough which when we'll I was still, younger we'll still feel but yeah. it's not like an like I really went into it you know like I really yeah. explored that. now I kind of just know like oh just because he wants to have sex with you doesn't really mean much it's really easy to get guys it's to really have easy to get guys you. to have sex with you <laughs> it's, um, it's not really an accomplishment yeah and I don't know like honestly it's just I haven't gotten excited about it in years like there was uh, you know maybe I can count on my hands the amount of times that I shot with other guys while I was with my ex and every time it was like, yeah, it's fun, but like I wouldn't, I couldn't care less. It's not like I'd sleep with any of these guys off camera. Like I wouldn't yeah. go out of my way to do it. And nothing on them. Like I actually adore like everyone in the industry. Um, I just don't, I'm just not feeling it. And you've just done it. You're, you're yeah. done. Yeah. And then um, even earlier this year, before I ended up in a relationship, like I was really debating with myself. I was like, do I want to do boy girl this year or do I not want to? Because mm-hmm. I don't have to. Um, and ultimately like I, d- I did a couple scenes and it wasn't cause I was like, I was like single and I was like, well, at least I'm getting laid, <laughs> you know, yeah. like I will do boy girl. I'm single. I'm going to need like dick. <laughs> like, do your fans like harass you about it? Like we need boy girl content. Are they pretty like annoying about it to you now? Or? I don't think so. No, no, they're very chill to be honest. Cause they got so much, like I'm, I'm assuming anal I have and so all. much back content that I still recycle that like yeah. a lot of new people coming along haven't seen before okay. so I feel like I have so much content that I've shot over the years that I really don't need to do, shoot anything new like oh. you'd have to be a really hardcore fan to have seen everything I bet there are some guys out there, there who are. really have there they are have all the and DVDs. they're sad about it they're like I wish you would do this and I'm like nope <laughs> you're gonna have to masturbate to the same one over mm-hmm. and over and over again okay so you're currently sticking to doing girl girl content, doing things mm-hmm. that you actually really jo- enjoy on your OnlyFans, and you said you're gonna get back into Twitch. Yeah, I'm gonna get back yeah. into. It. I'm like currently setting everything up. Okay, but a, a lot of what I do right now is nothing. Nothing, which is fun. <laughs> Fuck yeah, you earned it. Um, any anything else that you wanna wanna be doing that you're like working towards? Um, honestly, no. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I'm like taking things very slowly like this year because I get I get overwhelmed easily. Yeah. And like sometimes like I, I hit a wall and I just need to chill and take a step back for a little while. So that's kind of what I'm doing is I'm just taking a step back. I feel like when I first met you and we were doing a photo shoot, I feel like you were like you were so like you wanted to do so much and do maybe too much. And so now mm-hmm. it's kind of like I got burnt out. You got burnt out. Yeah, yeah. it's it's nice to be able to. uh Give yourself space and acknowledge like, okay, 
you are like what is the point like i feel like sometimes i'm like all right we got time yeah we got time yeah. we've earned the ability to be able to do business on our terms mm -hmm. so it's it's good to be able to just enjoy that and enjoy your dogs yes exactly so um thank you for coming to my podcast i'm so glad you <laughs> wanted to dress up with me my dress thank looks you. fabulous on you um so you can find me on instagram mia malkova twitter mia malkova my twitter is actually really fun um, so is my Instagram, so is my OnlyFans. Everything's me and Malkova. I'm on Snapchat. I have a YouTube. What else do I have? I'm like on everything. Twitch, TikTok. Yeah, Twitch, TikTok. Just go have fun. She's killing it Just everywhere. Look. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and uh, have a good day on purpose. Bye. <laughs>